Shalom, everybody. Pastor Mark Biltz here with El Shaddai Ministries. And we're so glad to have you join the Creator. We're joining Him. You're not just joining us at El Shaddai. You literally are joining heaven and earth, the angels in heaven, as we bring in the new moon of the month of Elul. Now, Elul is the sixth month on the religious calendar, but it is the last month, the twelfth month on the civil calendar. And so uh, I would like to begin, as I always do, with Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Listen to this. It says, And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days and years. Well, the new moon, which is the start of every biblical month, is the most pivotal date in the biblical calendar because without the new moon, we couldn't have any of the biblical holidays. Uh, and so, I mean, we wouldn't know when they occurred. And so this is known as Rosh Chodesh, or the sanctification of the new moon, the new month. And this tells us what will be holy in any given month. Now, I have here uh, like the river of life uh, and the tree of life. Listen to Genesis 2, 9. The Bible begins with the tree of life and the Bible ends with the tree of life. Here's Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's Genesis 2, 9. Well, listen to Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2. It says, he showed me a river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, it says, on this side of the river and on the other was the tree of life, bearing 12 different kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every single month. Wow. Now, when it talks in Revelation about yielding its fruit every month, guess what? That does not refer to January, February, or March. Believe me, that didn't exist in Genesis, okay? So God is talking about his calendar. And uh, people wonder sometimes, well, during the millennial reign, when there's the new heavens, the new earth, what are we going to do then? Are we still going to keep the new moon? But here, listen to this from Ezekiel. This is 46.1. Now, this is during the thousand-year millennial reign when Messiah is here on the old heaven with the old heaven and the older still. And it says, Thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east will be shut six working days. But on the Sabbath day, it'll be opened. And in the day of the new moon, it will be opened. So you, do you realize when Jesus himself is here for 1,000 years, we're going to keep the Shabbat. We're going to keep the new moon. Now, how about when there's a new heaven and a new earth? How are we going to know uh, if we're still keeping the new moon or not? Well, listen to Isaiah. This is chapter 66. And listen to this. This is verse 22 and 23. It says, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, your seed that's David's seed, Israel, Jews in particular, shall your name remain. And it'll happen that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. Can you imagine? We have the thousand year reign with Messiah and we're doing the new moon. And then God says, after he gets rid of the old heavens and the old earth, he creates a new heaven and a new earth for all of eternity. God says, at every new moon, all flesh will come and worship him. I think he wants us on that calendar, not on our pagan calendar. Well, listen to this. This is from Psalms 104, verse 19 through 21. And God, it says here that God made the moon specifically to mark the seasons. That means to signify certain times. And he says the sun knows it's going down you make darkness, O Lord, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest creep forth. 
the young lions roar after their prey. They seeking their food from God. And so what we want to do is we like to recognize the new moon in honor of our father who art in heaven. So at this time, I am going to blow the shofar. Now, I'm not the best shofar blower in the world, but we're going to see what we can come up with here. Yay, we did it. Hey, man, I hope you're blowing you, your shofar. All of you that are watching, blow your shofar as well. Uh, make a joyful noise. If you don't have a shofar, hey, you can still make a joyful noise. Okay, listen to Psalm. This is uh, chapter 81, verse 3 and 4. It says, blow the horn or the shofar at the new moon and at the full moon. That refers to Passover, Sukkot, for our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. And it's all about the covenant that God had made with King David. Listen to this again. Psalm 89 Verse 20, listen to what God says. I found David, my servant, with my holy oil, I've anointed him, with whom my hand has established, my arm also shall strengthen him. And then it goes on to say in Psalm 89, verse 23 and 24, I'm going to, God says, I'm going to beat to pieces his adversaries before him, and I'm going to smite those that hate him. Wow, David's Jewish. He's from the tribe of Judah. And God says he's going to smite all of those that hate him, the Jewish people. And then it says, but my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him. And through my name shall his horn be exalted. And then in verse 28 and 29, it says forever. How long? Forever will I keep my mercy for him and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. That's pretty incredible. Look at verse 33 and 37. God says, nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to David to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor will I alter the word that's gone out of my lips, God says. Then he says, once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed will endure forever his throne as the sun before me it will be established forever like the moon even like the faithful witness in the sky do you realize every time you see the moon that is to tell you God is speaking to you that God is faithful to the Jewish people he's faithful to Israel he's faithful to David God put the moon up as a sign as a marker Listen to Jeremiah 33. This is verse 25 and 26. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I'm not the one who appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant. Well, how many of you know that will never happen? As a matter of fact, uh, the initial command here in Exodus 12, verse 2, God is telling Moses that this month will be the beginning of your month. It'll be the first month of the year to you, Israel, has always gone by God's calendar <clears throat> for the civil year and for the new year. We need to understand that we need to sanctify the new moon. Now, when it comes to sanctification, do you make yourself holy or does God make you holy? Well, you can make yourself holy to your denomination, but if you want to be holy to God, only God can make you holy according to his standards. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7 and 8. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. You are to keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So we need to understand the Lord is the one who sets us apart. But then at the same time, listen to Leviticus 20, 26. It says, God says, you shall be holy to me. Not just holy, but holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy. And I'm the one who has separated you from all the nations that you should be mine. But once we have that holiness, that separation from God, he expects us to maintain that 
level of sanctification, that holiness. Listen to Leviticus 18.30. It says, therefore you are to keep my charge that you do not any of these abominable customs which were done before you that you defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. So how do we keep ourselves holy? By keeping his holy commandments. Why are the nations not holy? They don't keep his commandments. Why are we holy? We do keep the commandments. So with that said, we want to sanctify the new moon. So if all of you would, wherever you're at around the world, let's take a moment and let's stand. And let's say these prayers together. This is the prayer. One of the prayers we're going to say for the sanctification of the new moon. All right. Together. May it be thy will, Lord, our God and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen. Selah. Pause and think about that. All right. The next prayer. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who created the skies by your word and all of heaven's host with the breath of your mouth. You gave them appointed times and roles and they never miss their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, O Lord, who renews the moons, the new moons. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandment and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Amen and amen. You be seated. I'm going to take a moment now and teach about this new month we're in, the month of Elul. Now, if you'll notice here, again, I have how the tribes were arranged around the tabernacle and the spring feasts were... Uh, uh, are the three tribes that have to do with the three months and spring was Issachar, Judah, and Zebulun. We're now in summer. And so we're looking at Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. And guess what? The month of Elul is the tribe of Gad. Now, we're going to talk about some very interesting things here. Elul is the last month, as I said earlier, of the biblical calendar year as far as the civil year. So it's the 12th month on the civil calendar with Rosh Hashanah, Tishri being the first month. Because it's the 12th month, as it was uh, when you read in Exodus, it was at the end of the year, it says in Exodus, before God moved the religious calendar or added it, I should say. And uh, so it signifies the end, not only the end of the year, but it also signifies end times. That's so important. And God always saves the best for last. What we talk about oftentimes in the month of Elul, it is known as when the king is in the field. It's that month that God, in one sense, his presence comes down to earth and he spends 30 days, the whole month of Elul, going around looking at all the laborers that are working his field. So one month a year, the king leaves his royal palace, they say, to go out and meet the common folks. Well, guess what? Yeshua left his habitation also, and he came down to earth to meet with his creation as well. This is incredible when you think of how God humbled himself to become a part of creation. <clears throat> now, Elul means harvest. Uh, in Mark 4, 29, get a load of this. It says, when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest is come. Listen to Revelation 14, verse 15 and 18. It says, and another angel came out of the temple, 
crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in your sickle and reap for the time has come for you to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle. And listen to what he said. Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe. How does Messiah know the grapes are fully ripe? Because he's on this earth walking to and fro by his spirit. And he knows you don't reap until the harvest is ripe. And guess what? It becomes ripe in the month of Elul. Now, listen to Proverbs 18, 22. This is when he also goes forth to meet his bride. Right before the wedding. And listen to Proverbs 18:22. He who finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Wow. And all, if all of you remember, what do they yell at the end of a wedding? Mazel tov. Yay. Well, guess what? That means finding a wife is a good thing. Well, mazel in Hebrew also means constellation. The constellation of the stars, the dip, the 12 constellations. And each constellation has to do with one of the tribes of Israel. We'll get, get a load of this. Uh, the constellation for the month of Elul just so happens is the virgin, the bride. That's why Elul is all about Mazel Tov. The wedding ceremony is about to take place. What's amazing is the word Elul in the Aramaic language means to search. And that's what God is doing. He's searching to and fro in his field. And we are to be searching for him. And in the Akkadian language, Elul means repentance and intercession. Uh, listen to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 20 and 21. God says, is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a darling child? For as often as I speak against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, says the Lord. And then he says, set up the road signs, make guideposts, set your heart toward the highway, even the way by which you went. Turn again, virgin of Israel, turn again to these your cities. God is looking for his bride to please return back to him. Now, here's something we want to bring out concerning the bride. When we think of the song of the bride, we can't help but think of the song of songs. Well, get a load of this. In the song of songs, chapter six, verse three, is the famous verse on the Lidoti, Vidoti Lee, which means I am my beloved's and my beloved's is mine. You know what's amazing about that? If you look at this PowerPoint where I have the red arrows, that's the Hebrew word, Ani Lidoti, Vidoti Li. And guess what? The red arrows point at the first letter of each word, and we find it forms the word Elo. So again, this is so important that when God is looking for his beloved and the beloved is looking for him, the timing is in the month of Elo. That is incredible. Now, if you also get a load of this, if you look at the, each one of these words, and if you look at the last letter of each word, they're all yuds. Well, guess what? Yud has a numerical value of 10. So we find in this same phrase, 10 times four is 40. Well, guess what? From a low one to Yom Kippur is 40 days. Wow, this is incredible. In that very phrase, I'm my beloved and my beloved is mine, we find the whole month of Elul and we find the significance of the 40 days. And you know what? This is incredible. It was on Elul 1 that Moses climbed the Mount Sinai the second time and he was there for 40 days looking for atonement. Guess what else? Elul 1 be is when Yeshua began his 40-day trek into the wilderness 
also coming out on the very same day, Yom Kippur, that Moses came down. This is incredible. <clears throat> and we see these 40 days he's in the field right in the phrase of the bride talking to him. Now, get a load of this. <clears throat> the Gad, who this tribe uh, is associated with the month of Elul, his breastplate stone on the high priest breastplate was agate. Okay, well, get a load of this. In Exodus 39, 12, the Hebrew word for agate is shavo, the sheen bait vav that you see right next to the agate stone. That's how you spell agate in Hebrew. Well, guess what? That also is the root word of repentance or to return. So th these are the very, also the very three middle letters of the word Teshuvah. So I think it's interesting that how all God is weaving all of this together, repentance, return within the tribe, tribal stone of Gad in the breastplate as well. We'll get a load of this. Look at the bottom Hebrew phrase. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse six, where it says the Lord, your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, that you may what? Live. Well, guess what? That Hebrew word, if again you look at the first letter of each of those four words, it spells the month of Elul again. So this month of Elul is a month of repentance. It's a month of return. It's a month of circumcising your heart. Okay. Uh, it's the month that Yeshua went up for 40 days. The month M Moses went up for 40 days. It's the month the king is in the field searching and looking for those who are willing and wanting to return back to him. This is incredible. Now, Gad, the very name Gad, if you go to Genesis 30, 11, when his mother gave birth, listen to this. Leah said, good fortune has come. So she called his name Gad. That's where you get mazel tov, good fortune. All right, that's where this comes from. Well, as I said, Elul speaks of the end. It speaks of going into the last harvest. Well, who comes at the end? Elijah. Well, guess who comes from the tribe of Gad? Yes, Elijah is from the tribe of Gad. This is so incredible. All these different tie-ins. We have all these significant events so you can make the connection between heaven and earth. Don't be just an earthly person. Be a heavenly person and connect with your creator who wants to connect with you, especially during the month of Elul. So with that said, let's stand and let's pray a blessing over all of you that are watching. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In that most wonderful name, Eyeh. I share a yeah. Let's begin this new month of a low with excitement. Amen. Go get them. Blessings. Bye-bye.